It's week two of this corral fence being torn down and to be perfectly honest with you guys, I'm really, I'm getting antsy to get this thing put back up. Every day that the fence is down is a day that I have a little bit more to worry about because I never know if the cows are gonna kind of break their way back in here in the night, you know, thinking that this is some place they should be. And when they get in here, there's no fence to keep them in. I dug the holes during the week, during the night, I didn't film any of that just because it was dark and you know it doesn't film very good but i do have two holes that are left here that have been giving me trouble and i don't think that it's roots i think it is just just really solid hard ground so i've been soaking them in water for uh, the last overnight and i'm hoping that that has been enough to sort of soften them up to where i can get the auger bit to to bite in and, and dig those out. My goal today is to get all these posts in the ground with concrete so that the concrete has a chance to set and then I can come back and start welding pipe. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get that far, but, but that's what I'm shooting for. That's what we're doing today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. Well, soaking this hole did not seem to do the trick, so I'm gonna have to get creative and figure out a way to push down on that digger while it's running, and hopefully the added pressure will be enough to break through whatever's down there. Maybe it is a root, I don't know. I found this digging bar. It's about, eh, about as tall as I am, so it's not real long, but the metal is hard. It shouldn't just bend when I push down on it. Basically, I'm just gonna use this thing like a giant pry bar on this digger. What is difficult about doing this is that a lot of times what can happen is the auger bit will break through whatever's holding it up and then it just starts sort of churning right on down into the ground. So in that time frame, I need to get from the back of the tractor back up on the seat where I can get to the controls and stop that thing before it bottoms out on that drive shaft. I know I'm gonna get a lot of people telling me how dangerous this is, what I'm about to do, and I understand that, I don't take it lightly. You know, I, I am careful when I do stuff like this, but even though it is dangerous, sometimes this is, this is just what you have to do to get things done. I think I'm about as deep as I'm gonna get. If I welded some teeth onto that digging auger that could kind of grind or cut through that root, that would probably work, but I'm not sure that it's worth the time to do that because I'm, I'm probably two and a half feet deep, which is pretty close to where I wanna be. Usually I shoot for three foot deep uh, post holes. So I think we're just gonna call this one good there that post will stick up a little bit. I'll just have to cut it off lower to match the other ones, but I'm just spending way too much time trying to dig this hole. I'm gonna be here all morning. Um, so let me try to get this other one that was giving me trouble last night. Hopefully it'll dig just fine. And then we can go back up to the house, get the rest of the supplies and the materials to get this done.
Now that's what it's supposed to do. Well, there's my fence. I guess now I just have to go put it up. I'm back over here at the ranch now. I've got all my stuff that I think I'm gonna need. I'm pretty sure I have everything. So I'm just gonna start setting these posts one at a time. This morning I was hopeful that I might be able to get this whole line done, but I, I wasted a lot of time this morning trying to get my farm generator started and it just, it wouldn't do it. So um, I ended up just grabbing my camping generator which is probably what I should have gotten in the first place so now it's a little bit later in the day than I was hoping to get over here but if I don't get this done today there's always tomorrow Well, I got down here to post number eight and I realized that I made a miscalculation when I bought concrete and I'm about five bags short. So I've still got two posts left that need to go in, but I've only got one bag of concrete left. So this job is gonna have to wait and I'll have to finish it tomorrow. To tell you the truth, that doesn't really break my heart because I'm pretty tired and I'm ready to take a break. It's the next day now. I ran into town this morning and got some more concrete, so I don't see any reason why I shouldn't be able to wrap this up today. The posts that I'm sinking into the ground are a three inch square tubing that's 3 seconds wall thick. Square tubing is definitely more expensive than round pipe, but I have found that you save so much time 
fitting up the cross pipes because you don't have to uh, to saddle or notch the pipe that the time savings is just it's worth the extra money to me in the past i have typically used 120 wall square tubing for the post which which equates to about an eighth of an inch but i was able to get this square tubing used and it was a little bit thicker which is definitely not a problem obviously thicker is going to be stronger really the only downside is they're a little bit heavy trying to move them around but once you get them in the ground it's actually a lot nicer to weld onto that thicker metal as opposed to the eighth inch wall i was cutting these posts off at eight feet long and they're sticking out of the ground about five feet which means they're somewhere around three foot deep. This is probably a little bit tall for a corral fence. You could, you could really get away with it being a lot shorter. In fact, the one that we tore down was probably more like four feet tall. The reason that I like tall fences is because I have found that when you have cows that kind of have an idea like they might want to jump a fence, when you have one that's this tall, they generally won't even try because it, it's just kind of too intimidating for them or they just don't think that they can make it. This old fence is what the new one will be to, so to just kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about. If a cow wanted to jump this fence, she could probably get her chin up on this top rail, but they usually, they won't really want to try to jump unless they can get their jaw over, their whole head over that pipe. If they can't do that, I don't think that I've ever seen one try to jump. I've spaced these posts 10 and a half feet apart, and the reason that I landed on that sort of uh, seemingly random number is that the pipe that I bought that will be welded up in between the posts come in a 21 foot length. When I built this fence, I put the posts 10 foot apart on center, and what I realized is that I just ended up wasting a lot of pipe because I had a little one foot section left over on each piece that I bought and you know over time that adds up and it's just not really uh, very efficient to waste that much material so now I try to space the posts out in such a way that we have minimal waste on the pipe the posts on this fence are actually 12 feet apart and the reason for that is just because I had 24 feet from that gate to the corner I didn't want to put an extra post here it would have made a ton more welding and it would have made the cost of this a little bit more expensive so that square tubing is not cheap so i went with 12 feet here 12 feet is probably the most that i would want to go any longer than that then you would want to at least weld something in between the pipes to keep them from uh, flexing or bending like if a cow reaches her head through to try to eat the other bad thing about a 12 foot spacing is now your pipe length is weird. So you'll have to weld the little stubs on the end to make everything work. So you can get away with a 12 foot spacing, but it's a lot more work and, and it's honestly not as good. 10 foot is probably ideal. 10 and a half foot is gonna work. So of these three fences here that are all gonna kind of be connected and appear to be one, each one is gonna have a different post spacing. But like grandpa always used to say, the cows won't mind. On to the last one. That is the last post cemented into the ground now, so I can call this done. All that's left to do is weld the cross pipes up in between these posts, but I don't want to do that today because I like to give the concrete a day or two just to sort of set up and cure. I don't know that that's really necessary, but just something that if I have the time, I have always done it. I think this turned out really good. This line is just as straight as an arrow. My post height is, is pretty consistent. There's one <laughs> glaring bad example where I had that root and I wasn't able to dig the hole as deep as I wanted to. But actually that post only ended up being about six inches taller than the others. So it's really not that bad. After I get all the pipe welded up in between the posts, I'll come back here with my porta band or maybe my plasma cutter and I'll cut the tops of these posts off to get a consistent look. Normally with the cattle facilities and things of that nature, you don't worry too much about what things look like. 
but since this fence is on the side of the yard here I want this one to look nice with the exception of getting everything cleaned up which today really isn't too much I'm done with this project for now but I've still got a few other things that I need to do out here and one of them is a job that's pretty reoccurring this time of year and that is checking on irrigation water but today I'm gonna try to have a little bit of fun with that not quite done yet I'll probably have to come out here in a little while and check it again but I think for now I can head back home thanks for hanging out at the ranch with me today guys and I hope I'll see you again on farmer Tyler ranch uh -huh.